have this right here. And when I hear the faintest bit of verbal clutter, a long pause also, a cough, fake coughing also qualifies. And so when you feel that little squirt, keep your composure, keep your composure. And continue to do it. The person with the most verbal clutter will be the person who loses. Sorry. If you have the most verbal clutter, then what's going to happen after that? Then the other team, we will give them 2,500 points for their team. All right. Let's see here. Who won the last game? Who was it that won the last game? Astronauts. Astronauts, you can choose to go first or second. Second. Whoopsie. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to feel really bad about squirting you. But I'm going to get over it. <laughs> All right. All right, Mr. Dave, do you have the time? I'm going to need for you to uh, close your eyes, please, and then reach inside of this bucket. Would you prefer, I'm sorry, just a second, would you prefer the handheld mic? Was that fine? No, that's fine. This is fine? Okay. I need for you to reach inside, grab something out, and then I'll give you a moment to look at it. Once you look at it, then you can begin talking about it for 35 seconds. And again, I am listening for verbal clutter. No, no, you take it out. No, take it out, because you're going to talk about it. You can hold it. You can hold yeah, you can hold it, because you're going to talk about it for just a little bit of time. <laughs> All right. Got a moment? As soon as I say go. <laughs> That's terrible, isn't it? Okay. <laughs> Ready? I'll just stand like here, just kind of casually. Ready, set, begin. Well, it's light, and it holds liquid, and it can be hot, or it could be cold. Um, <laughs> Um, <laughs> long pause. Is that the end of our relationship? Is that this week? <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I have counted five. Oh, you have. I'm sorry. I counted five. Five clear things that was a pause. All right. Are you ready? Do you think she's going to be able to do it? Think she's going to be able to do it? All right, reach inside, reach inside, grab you something that you're going to be talking about. Aluminum foil, aluminum foil. All right. How are you doing? Get ready. Get set and go. All right, for those of you who don't know me, I am a chelly, and that means I come from a big family. Right here, we have some aluminum foil. We get the Costco brand, big size. So, that Costco brand serves a lot of us. We've got to cook. For a whole week's meal, gotta serve it up. And being the youngest, that's who I am. I was so often threatened to be stored in the oven, wrapped in <laughs> aluminum foil, <laughs> to be served to the rest of us. <laughs> well, you know, this is vacation Bible school, all about forgiving. Yeah. Well done. Well, well done. done. 2,500 points for the astronauts! <laughs> I think we have a political future. Yes, yeah. we do. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> All right. Team leaders, I'm going to need for you to kind of sit amongst your folks. Please give them a, uh, a microphone. Both of you all will need a microphone for this. So this, and uh, let me just give you this one. Give this one because you're going to need to sit amongst your folks. All right. I'm, I'm behind one on each one of these. All right. I think we're good. Now, this game is called Emoji Memory. Who knows what an emoji is? Please raise your hand. You know what an emoji is. All right. You can put your hands down. Here's what I'm going to do. 
The reason you're sitting out there, team leaders, wherever you are, oh, I guess I can't miss the astronaut costume, is I am looking for the first person I'm listening for, Pastor Josh's voice or Mr. Josh's voice. The reason I'm having you sit amongst them is because if you know the answer, you need to say it to them, not just yell it so the other person can say it. If you know the answer, the first answer in your mouth. So here is what must be done. I'm going to show you a row of emojis. You memorize the row of emojis. Can we have this front can we have this front line turned off here so everyone can see clearly? What's going to happen is I'm going to give you enough time to look at it for a moment. After I give enough time, then I will take away one of the emoji. One of the, after the emojis are gone, what would happen? Wing. Yeah, I'm looking for the team leaders to say that. Wing. Head exploding. Head exploding. Wing face. Wing face is correct. So that point would right. go over here to this side. All right. So after we do, after the team leader, well, team leaders, you're going to listen for your team or whatever it is that is there. Let me make sure I'm in the right spot. You're going to be listening for the team, your team to be able to say whatever it is. I'll show you. I'll do the first show you. And then after I show you, then the first person to be able to say that emoji will get the point. Does that make sense? That makes sense. That makes sense. All right, then, for this game, 3,000 points. Let's go ahead and get started with emoji memory. Who's going to win? Astronauts! <laughs> oh, thank you. All right. Here is your first row of emojis. Ready? Steady. Ready? I'll on smiley face. Ooh, did you hear? I heard it first from from this side. I believe I heard it. Oh, I heard that it. wasn't the team captain. All right, I believe I heard it over here first. First point astronaut, but Mr. Dave's going back to check to check on who says it first. All right, make sure you say it clearly and loudly. Ready? Let's crank it up. Guys, put the handheld a little bit louder, please. <laughs> do, 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 Thank do. you. Z. Sleep. 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 The what? Z. Z the had sleep. The Z. <laughs> sleeping. <laughs> I'll take it. It was Z. Got it. Sleeping. Yeah! Sleeping. Good job. Good job. One or two. I think so. Does someone have score? Does someone have? Can someone? Okay. One to one. Get ready. This should be easy. Ready. Study. Study. Boom. Crying face. Crying face. Crying face. Crying face! Crying face! Tears, sadness, <laughs> anguish, grief. I know, I'm going with all of them. Okay, y'all team leaders come over here. Y'all, oh. I'm going to have to throw it out because I'm going to have to hear, I'm going to have to hear straight from your voice. Mr. Dave's going to just wish for the right one that is there. All right, I'm sorry, I thought that you could sit amongst each other. Ready, let's crank it up, crank it up, crank it up, crank it up. Ready? Five? Four, three, oh, boom! Kissing. Kissing, kissing. Yes. kissing, kissing, whistling. It looks like a whistle, but it's a kissing. All right, point over there. Very good job. Very good job. Get ready. Ready? Yes. Come closer, guys. Oh, he's up. Bowling. Ping pong. Pool, 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 pool. 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 Frog. Frog. Wow. Three, two, one. Ready? <laughs> I'll tell you, sir. Me down. My left up and down. Up arrow. Up arrow. Down. Up arrow. I saw up arrow. arrow. First. Right left up and down. <laughs> Up right, arrow. left, up and down. That's what I said. I said all together. It was 
What you? What did you say? I said up arrow. He said up. You said left first. Take your first answer. Oh, okay. First answer. Up astro. <laughs> All right. You thought that was confusing. Ready? Nine. 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 Astronauts! Astronauts! Ready? I will watch in your mouth. Let me see your mouth. Ready? Pizza. Pizza. Apple, apple, apple. Pizza. Apple. Pizza. apple. It's apple. It's apple. What's that? What's the score? Four to four. Guys, I'm going to need hearing aids. All right. Let's crank it up one more time. Your first answer is what counts? Ready? Minus. 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 You said mi minus. Minus. That is correct. Minus. 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 All right. That's the final one. Uh, what's the score? Five. Four. Orbiters. Orbiters. 3,000. Can I get the lights? Can I get the lights on here? Can I get the lights on? Thank you so much. All right. Wow, it's been close. Oh, wow. The time has gotten away, but we're doing really quickly. All right. Can I have the team leaders to come on up here to the front? Team leaders, come on up to the front. All right, yep, you're going to sit down and face your opponent. All right. <laughs> you probably have seen this. I don't have, I can't do the, uh, am I? We're going to do some dad jokes. <laughs> now, you say, what is a dad joke? Well, dads like to be funny. And dad likes to tell jokes. Now, the in this, though, you cannot laugh. If your team leader, la let me define a laugh. This is a normal face. <laughs> that is laughing. As awful as it may look, breathing unnormally <laughs> is called laughing. All right? I have to have somebody neutral since I am kind of hosting the game. Mr. Dave, can you be my judge? As we look at our team leaders, the team leaders, you must ask the question to the joke. And then after you ask the question, you must answer. And then once you answer the question, you give him the punch line. Here is your first joke. Remember, Pastor Josh, if you laugh, that is a point over here. Smile counts as a laugh. Um, That's kind of harsh. <laughs> I don't know. Smile. Mouth. Yes, it counts as a laugh. All right. Straight face. Straight face. <laughs> Did you hear about the restaurant on the moon? No, I did not. Really? It has great food, but no atmosphere. I don't get it. <laughs> I don't even understand the joke. Well, he didn't laugh. <laughs> It has great food, but no atmosphere. I get it, I don't laugh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. He said fine. It was just, uh huh? I don't know. Question. Did you uh, hear uh, the rumor about the butter? No. Well, I can't believe it's not butter. No. Well, I'm not going to spread it. <laughs> Try again. <laughs> 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 All we had was a blink. I, I, <laughs> He's good. I think He's we're good. Doing good. We're doing good. Here you go. What is brown? You. True. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. And Thank sticky. You. Still you? <laughs> a stick. Oh, I get it. You get, you get, get it? it. It's, it's brown, like a, a broom stick. <laughs> it's brown. <laughs> How many Let's not ad lib. Just answer the question. <laughs> yeah. How
how many lips, okay, <coughs> how many lips does a flower have? None. Two lips. <laughs> I like roses. <laughs> Man. Nice. They're good. <laughs> Why was the broom late to work? Why was a broom late to work? I have absolutely no clue. You ready? I'm ready. It over swept. <laughs> so ah, well done. There you go. We'll call the draw. Now, the person asking the question, can they laugh? Huh? Yeah. Okay. okay. What? Oh, really? Oh, I can laugh. I send the joke. Oh, that's okay. Oh, that's okay. such a relief. Okay. 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 I can laugh. I'm sending. Yeah, the person asking yeah, the yeah, question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The person. The other part. <laughs> <Okay>. there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. How uh, do you cut the ocean? <laughs> Now these are funnier. How do you cut the ocean in half? I don't know. Moses used a rod. With a seesaw. It's <laughs> good. It's good. Okay, I don't got nothing for that one. All right. Oh my God. Well. Because of time here, <laughs> oh my goodness, I got to put a couple of these. Because of time here, I'm just going to be waiting for one of y'all to have a sudden depth. So actually, I'm going to have to call this a draw. Give them both a ah, hand. Good job, guys. <laughs> 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 you know, but we do have one more, but we're going to have to push it. We're going to have to push it and move it over to our penny roll offering. So the 3,000 points, we're going to have to move. And as we get ready for our penny roll offering, Mr. Dave, it's going to be worth how much today? Well, yesterday's was worth 4,500. Today it's going to go up to 7,000 points. 7,000 points. Yes. Let's go ahead. We're going to bring this penny roll offering. Are there any more tickets out there? Yeah. Any more tickets out there? Is there any more tickets? Is there any more tickets at all? We still have a few. All right, during this time, last bits, last time to be able to put them inside. I believe we have a system whereby we can be able to accommodate all the bricks and different things going on. Any other tickets out there? Wow. All right, is that over? Oh, we still loot. There's still a few more. There's still a few more. Miss Megan, Megan, would you mind playing something while we do this? Yeah. All right, these are supplied by the team members. Um, what do you got? Some papers, sir. Are they, are they for bricks? Yes. <laughs> I think it's over. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we'll just put them up there. Yeah. We'll just put them up there. How many bricks? Eight. Eight, eight more bricks for the blue. Eight more bricks. Twelve. There's twelve. There's twelve? <laughs> this is twelve over here. That means twelve more bricks. Do we want to do we want to average it out to make it be like this? I just think we could just go like this. <laughs> There's twelve more bricks over here. <laughs> is there anything else? <laughs> <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, if you have not been here the rest of the earlier this week, typically we would take the scale and we would weigh to who has the most bricks and pennies upon their side. Usually, there is a <laughs> there is a slight competition, but right here in my hand, uh, in addition to the bricks that you see up here for this side for the astronauts. We would have to add 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 more bricks 
over here to the side. So I am going to take a great estimation and plan of liberty and say that the 6,000 points for the offering, I'm sorry, 7,000 points for the offering goes over here to the astronauts. <laughs> I guess somebody's going to go hug their mama today because I just don't think the five-year-old was the one who had the eight bricks <laughs> that were there. Anyway, great job. All the different things we've done this week, the games and activity. We appreciate y'all jumping in. Sorry that got time got, got away from us. We were going to test those moms, youth moms versus the experienced moms to see whether or not who's the best or change your diapers and multitasking action. Uh, we'll have to wait for another year for that. But anyway, we're so excited that you joined us. We're getting ready now to be dismissed to our different classes. So if you are 12 and under, you can go ahead and stand up. And we'll see you down the pastor, my pastor Dave, Brother Dave, we'll see you down there. All right, as they're going down, if you adults and teenagers want to take your hymn book and turn to hymn number 463, All That Thrills My Soul Is Jesus. Let's sing this song together as we prepare for the preaching of God's Word tonight. A great song. Let's stand together as we sing on that very first verse. Who can cheer the heart like Jesus? Hymn number 463. Who can cheer the heart like Jesus by His presence all divine? True and tender, pure and precious, oh, how blessed to call Him mine. All that thrills my soul is Jesus. He is more than life to me. And the fairest of ten thousand in my blessed Lord I see. On the fourth, every need his hand supplying, every good in him I see. On his strength divine relying, he is all in all to me. On the chorus without the piano, all that thrills my soul is Jesus. He is more than life to me. And the fairest of ten thousand in my blessed Lord. Amen. Great singing. Thank you. You may be seated. Amen. I've never had an astronaut lead the singing before, but he did a great job, all right? Well, anyway, what a blessing it's been to be able to be here this week. Thank you all for making it a priority um, to be able to be here. I you know, hope that you've had a good time as a family and whatnot, and it's been our privilege, our family, um, to be able to be part of this Vacation Bible School that you've had here. We don't take it for granted. There's opportunities and stuff that I know that um, many people would enjoy to be able to invest, and so it's been our honor to be able to invest. Do pray it's been an encouragement, but it's been a help as well you know um you do pray for our family we get ready we our next stop is san antonio texas so we there's really no rhyme or reason to our schedule <laughs> you know sometimes uh sometimes it's right down the road sometimes it's quite not and so um as we travel um across the country and all the world obviously we just don't do it just uh you know play games and activities and different things like that though we enjoy it uh, we are passionate about the gospel of jesus christ and encouraging those saints and believe that lord has equipped us this way and so we give our family we give our time to them. And so I pray that you would, um, hope that you'd be in prayer. I, do we have prayer cards, baby? I think we might have some in the van. If you come by, we'll happily, some of you have our prayer card, and you pray for us, and we appreciate that. And anyway, if you're first time here, thank you so much at coming by somebody's invitation to those who we've seen for years now. What a blessing it is to be able to speak to you when we're time here. You know, we're going to be looking here in the book of Second Peter, Second Peter um, here this evening. And um, I, I don't know, I know people have their kind of in Enjoying, they, they enjoy certain aspects about the Bible, um, meaning like they have their niche. Like some people really love prophecy. Um, some people really enjoy studying uh, like the Old Testament 
kings or the prophets or studying um, creation versus evolutionary thought processes. I mean, some people have their niche, so to speak, that they enjoy. You know, I, I tell you, I don't know exactly what your niche may be of what you study, or maybe you just come to the Bible and there's still things that you try to understand or whatever it be that you're still studying about. But let me just tell you, before we jump into the deep things of eschatology or anything like that, I do believe very much so that there ought to be a doctrine that you know inside and out. There's a doctrine that you should be able to say in your sleep, there is a doctrine that you should know so well, and that's the doctrine of salvation. I, I hope that it would be natural to be able to talk about your faith. Now, I'll tell you two, th- two aspects. Number one, I believe Dave would even test, and actually I should have asked Dave what he spoke on yesterday. <laughs> that probably have been a helpful thing, but uh, as I think of this, probably one of the most frustrating things happened to me. I'm not even going to say because I want you to look at my schedule and try to figure out, but recently, I'll just, recently, this happened to me. Probably one of the most frustrating things that happens to me as an evangelist is there'll become a time and uh, um, this individual, there's a young man, and uh, he, I preached, and after I got done preaching about time and the principle of time, he went back to the back because during the invitation I said, hey man, you, you're not sure, maybe you're here and you're still trying to figure out Christ and you're not understanding about what it means to place your faith in him. I would love to talk to you about it, and I made the invitation saying, would you just go back to the back and there'll be somebody to meet you there. And as that person went back to the back, um, they stood there, and there were people, adults all around, and, and, and no one was comfortable to tell him about what it meant to be saved. It, 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 it really is very hard for me. Because, like I said, I'm not saying that you need to understand eschatology. I'm not saying about all these other matters. But what happens if during this session, I mean not this session or just whatever time, let's just say you're over here talking and someone interrupted you and said, Hey, hey, I need your help. Can you come over here? Could you do something for me real quick? Hey, this young man's in that room over there. Could you take my Bible and be able to tell that person over there in that room what it means to be saved from their sin. If you took that Bible and you walked into that room and that would make you shudder and say there's just absolutely no way and you're saved, there's a problem. There's a problem. And if you've been saved longer than five years and you still need the tabs to say, hey, jump from this verse, hey, jump to that verse, hey, jump, there's a problem. We must be incredible and studied to share our faith. You know, I, I want, there's so many different angles I want to be able to go, but I, I believe in getting to the basis and talking about salvation very much specifically and, and when being reminded of verses and memorizing of verses, that's important on one side. And we're, we're going to go through, we'll study that in just a moment because I want to emphasize something about faith over here about salvation. But I also want to emphasize on this point because I would say for me, and this is year number six, this is my 16th summer doing this. Wow. <laughs> I guess time flies. <laughs> 16, 16 summer. And I was at the 16 summer to preach to teens, teach your kids, teach your adults, preach to teens, kids, and adults. And then this is my life. My life is full time. I, I travel, I preach, this is what I do. Top question, top question. After any, invita- after any service, after any place, well, there's another top question. The first top question I get is, where are you from? <laughs> That's my first question. But uh, <laughs> besides that spiritual question that anybody asks me after any service is this. <sighs> Brother Adrian, Brother Adrian, um, I believe, I believe I'm saved. I believe I'm on my way to heaven, but I doubt my salvation. I, I, you know, I, I, I got saved at this age, and I believe I did, and now I'm here, and I just, I just have doubts about whether or not I am truly a child of God. By far, by far, top question I receive in ministry. Now, I want to talk about that for a little bit. Because I wanted to understand the importance of the Bible and salvation. Well, that's everything. 
But I also want to make a dynamic that you understand just in this quick illustration. Second Peter 1. Rick, let's read. Second Peter 1. Uh, let's start reading here in verse number 4. This is fruitful, fruitful, and understanding Christ, understanding what he's done for us. One, Second Peter 1, 4. The Bible says this. Whereby are given to us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partaker of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lots. And besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, virtue, um, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye should neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But, verse 9 says, he that lacketh these things is blind, interesting word, and cannot see afar off, and hath, another interesting word, forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. All right. Let's pray real quick, and let's talk about this for a moment. Father, thank you for this time. Thank you for your word. I pray, Lord, as we just look at this matter about salvation, Lord, very clearly, very understandably, I pray that you just give us wisdom to be able to, Lord, describe, Lord, just all the amazing, Lord, riches of your truth. And thank you, Lord. I pray that you just empty me of myself, fill me with thy spirit. Lord, help me to encourage, help me to exhort. Lord, help me to challenge, Lord, all the above, Lord, to be able to understand more and more about you. Thank you for everything you've done and will do. In Christ's name, I certainly pray it all. Amen. And this chair right here, I want this chair to enter represent a doctrine. The doctrine that we're going to talk about, we're going to get a little nerdy, and as we get a little bit nerdy, it's going to all come together, and I want you to understand something. This doctrine that I'm going to sit right here, over here, is a doctrine called eternal security. Eternal security is a doctrine that I believe is taught very clearly in the Bible. Eternal security is a fancy word that says, once I am saved, I am always saved. You say, all right, let's talk about the definition then of being saved. I don't like using phrases, and I don't like, because some people come back after a service, and, and, and they say, hey, Brother Adrian, um, I, this person just got saved, and I say, well, tell me about it. They said, yeah, I went through it. You know, I, I told them that. And so now that they know that, I know that they're on the way to heaven because they know it. And I went through it. What's it? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like we can sometimes use little buzzwords to be able to describe what Jesus Christ has done for us. And see, when, when I believe, though, when we be talk about the Bible and we talk about salvation, why not let's talk about words that are found in the Bible? Probably the maddest I've ever, well, not ever, but one of the maddest I've been in my life. I was at a place. There was this guy who was preaching. As he was, he had all the kids in the front. As as he had all the kids in the front, my daughter was sitting right there. He went through. He was an animated fellow. He was kind of walking around and says, hey, kids, I'm going to tell you a story. Here's this story. Here's what happened. He says, there's a king, and he has a castle. The king lived on this, tie, this giant hill. And on this giant hill, he had this kingdom. And all the kids in the village said, we want to go. We want to go to his kingdom. And so all the kids got together, and they made their way up the mountain to where the king was. The king was there. He looked down and said, do you want to come into my kingdom? The kid says, yes, we want to be in your kingdom. And he says this, hey kids, you know what? The kingdom is like God. And these little kids, then if these little kids wanted to get in, all they had to do was just ask him to come on inside. And he says, kids, do you want to go to heaven? The kid says, yes, we all want to go to heaven. He says, all right, bow your heads, all right, close your eyes, raise Repeat after me, and you are then going to go. That is heresy. You do not just click your heels and then just say something, and magically you're inside of God. Listen, salvation comes because you are saved from something. You can't, tell me, if, how, do you, how do you get saved? You talk about the word sin. You see what I'm saying? You are saved from something. See, see sin is why we are in this mess. If these kids, why I have an issue with this is those kids don't realize they have a need. They don't know. The reason you can't go to that kingdom is because you have broken God's law. The reason you can't just click your heels and just say something is because you didn't realize that sin is the reason why you can't enter his presence. And when you come to Christ... And you cannot acknowledge that you have broken his law. And you might say it differently than I would say it. But if you don't have a need. Remember the rich man that came to Christ? And he said, hey, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said, to answer to him that answered no one else. He said, you gotta, you wanna, oh, you want eternal life? Yeah, I want it. How must I inherit eternal life? Jesus looked at him and said, well, you got to keep all the law. Basically, you got to be perfect. Gotta be perfect. 
The man stepped back. I got that. What else I need to do? Jesus like, oh, you're perfect. <laughs> All right, here's what you need to go do. Go sell everything you have and give it to the poor, then come back and talk to me. And the rich man says, oh, let's not get crazy now. I didn't say all that, <laughs> you know. You know, Jesus, you say, was he trying to show work salvation? No, he was showing that man he had a need. He was trying to show that man, this is not something. You come to Christ broken, and once you come to Christ broken, that you have a need. You need to be saved from your sin. By faith, you trust him that he on the cross. He died for your sin. He took your place. You trust him alone for salvation. Salvation happens, and when salvation happens, eternal security. God says, you are my child. That's, his, that's what he says, okay? So, eternal security. So Adrian, you read that entire passage, and it has nothing to do. <laughs> You're right, because the passage had to do with this over here. <laughs> because I think these two doctrines get confused. <laughs> Eternal security is over here. But there's another, there's another doctrine. There's other doctrines called assurance of salvation. Now, this is different. This is, don't, why, don't, don't, we can't get these two confused. It, this, is, this, is, this is God's job. This is what God said he'd do. God said, I'll save you. And when I said he, when he says I say, he says I will keep my end of the bargain. Now this is different. Assurance is the, ah, I am God's child. I hear a message on hell and I don't think to myself, oh my soul, I am not his child. Yeah, okay, let's go back to the verse, the passage, okay? And so we look here, it says, Whereby I give to us and see great and precious promises. Then it goes to this list, verses 5 through 7. And he says, You're adding to your faith all these things. So you got faith. Your faith is placed in Jesus Christ. We got that. And so as your faith is then in Jesus Christ, it says in verse 8, For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye should neither be barren mm, nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is barren blind and cannot see afar off and have forgotten that he was purged from his old sin. So, so we got over here a person whose faith is not growing. A person whose faith, though they had faith, is remained in infancy. You see, how does faith remain in infancy? Your faith remains in infancy because your nose might not be in that book right there. You know the source of all your faith? It's the word of God. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. First time, first, first question. Now, there's reasons why a person can make, feel like, you know, I'm not saved. I'm not really God's child or whatever the situation. There, there, there are many reasons. It, it could be like pff, just straighten out sin. You have no fellowship with the Father. It, 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 it could be unforgiveness. The Bible talks about that in Matthew 6, 14 and 15. It, it could be a number of things. But one of the first questions that I typically ask is this. You doubt? Yeah, I doubt, Brother Adrian. I doubt it. I, I just don't know. I just don't, I just don't seem to have the faith that I once had. Hey, I have a question for you. When's the last time you read your Bible? When's the last time on your own, on your time, not for an assignment, not to look good, not just the people at work think you're spiritual, nothing like that. When's the last time you took your Bible and read it? You see, the Word of God is just not a wonderful textbook that you can just say and learn just about. This is the source of everything we have, including our faith. And when your faith does not grow, what he's saying, if you're not adding your faith, virtue, virtue, knowledge, knowledge, temper, don't look at God and say, oh, I don't have this assurance. I don't have this. So listen closely. Separate these in your mind. Eternal security. God kept his promise. This assurance of salvation, honey, that's your business. <laughs> if, if, if this there, that I then, he ain't a Christian, and I then have this whole little complex of, oh, did I say it right? Oh, did I really mean it? Oh, did I really mean it? Okay, this time I'm really going to mean it. I didn't repent last time, so let me repent this time. Oh, that, 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 I didn't believe enough. Last time I believed this much. This time I'm going to believe a lot. Next time. Play the game. Play the game. You know, assurance here of salvation that we understand, that's, that's here, I mean, you can call the doctor, call whatever on this side over, over here. I want you to understand that God does not want our faith just to lay stagnant. He wants our faith to grow. Now, do not pin me for saying that works is how salvation is attained. That is not even on the radar. 
But sometimes we like to sometimes kind of mix these two things together. No, I want you to be, I want to be abundantly clear. Romans 4, 5. But to him that worketh not, but believed on him that justified the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Do not Pin me for saying that works have anything to do with salvation. And I will go so far as to say is, you know, we talk about fruit inspecting and different things, and by your fruits you shall know them. That passage is actually talking about false prophets, okay? I'm not saying that we don't be wise. I'm not saying that we, the Bible says he that spiritual judges all things, not in a hypocritical way, but he does spiritual judges all things. But I'm not saying a lot of these different things. I am just pointing out the fact that do not say that works then equate anything with salvation. Salvation is by faith. But the devil then is, is still the master, as I said earlier, of making us care about the things that don't matter to where we will equate it with works. For example, all right, let's just, let's just move these, okay? I think we, think we pretty much just got the point. Um, you know, I'll put it like this. I would go to uh, services. I, I'll tell you my testimony. Um, I was saved at seven, at seven years old. Um, I heard that Jesus died for my sin, and I knew that I had sinned, and I offended God, and I knew that I needed to ask Jesus Christ to save me. The way that my church handled it is they, it was a junior church setting. They said, if you're not sure, I want you to walk back to the back. And I remember this clearly. There was a lady standing at the back, and she looked at me down, looked down at me, and she did this. She leaned down, and she said, something like that. I remember looking back at her, and I said, no. And she said, go back to your seat. I was like, oh, I kind of wanted to go back there, but okay. <laughs> you know, I, I didn't want to fight with her, you know, and I walked back to my seat. And I walked back to my seat. I said, well, I guess I'm just supposed to just ask him. <laughs> just supposed to believe. And seven years old, in my seat, I believed in the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved from my sin. Now, here's what happened. See, see, this is when you kind of equate the works with it, okay? In my mind, I'll tell you what I did. And this is why I preach so passionately about it, because I prayed the sinner's prayer 243 times, okay? So, I remember I went to church, and then I heard a guy, he got up, and let me remind you, there's nothing wrong with a testimony like this. I'm just saying how I interpreted it, okay? He got up, <clears throat> and I'm from the South, so everybody loud in the South, right? So, he got up, and he was like... Hey, I tell you what, I remember the day that I got saved. Oh, hallelujah, the day I got saved. Oh, buddy, I was about, I was usually, I was about 20, uh, so 27 years old. I was living in the world. I was doing a bunch of things I ought not do. And then at 33 years old, I tell you, God got a hold of me. And I tell you what, I got saved. I remember as soon as I got saved, I prayed. And as soon as I prayed, buddy, the moment I opened my eyes, honey, I just knew, whoa, glory to God, I'm this child. Man, after I got saved, you couldn't keep me out of church. Whoa! I tell you, as soon as I got saved, man, my nose in the book. Hallelujah! You know, and, and that's fine. That's fine. And so as he was going on, I was like, wow. I, I like got saved, and I went home and had me a bag of cheese puffs. <laughs> <laughs> now look, do not confuse. I am not saying. The Bible says, who, therefore, any man being Christ, he is a new creature. I, I'm not belittling that. But what I am saying is, sometimes we knock the legitimacy of a salvation experience based on emotion. Which then deters you from the purpose, which is faith. It's by, by grace, I say, through faith. He that believeth on him. See, okay, here's how it can interpret sometimes, for us sometimes, is... Um, how much, how much time? Oh, we're good. Um, somebody asked, well, well, okay, we're all different inside this room. I don't know if you are like this, but does uh, anybody cry during a movie? Does anybody cry during movies? Anybody cry? Any cry? <laughs> you put your hands down. I cry. I cry. It, 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 it's, it's over. I get misty. I haven't made it through one Undercover Boss episode yet without crying. And so it's just, I don't care. I own it. You know what I mean? Lion King. Mufasa, I knew it was going to happen. You know what I mean? Uh, like, <laughs> still got a little messy, you know? I cry. Now, we're all different, right? 
And with us being all different types of people all together, let's just put for the example of a marriage or a wedding. Been to a wedding. There are some grooms, as they are looking at their bride, some are just like all grins. Some are very composed. This is happy. I mean, this is my excited face, you know. And some grooms cry when they see their bride. Well, whatever. You can guess what I did on my wedding day. <laughs> I was a mess. I, I, it really was. It was so bad. My wife was like, get it together. <laughs> you know, you got to get through these vows, you know. And I, I, I just, it just was so much for me. So, so, but, but do you know what's interesting, though? We don't do it with any other decision except for salvation where if I walked up to Pastor Brown and said, Brother Brown, I see a ring on your finger and I see you with your wife and I see your ten kids. <sighs> Did you really get married? <laughs> well, yeah. No, 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 no. Did you cry? I don't know if you, if you didn't cry. I don't know if you really did it right, because when I got married, I cried, and uh, you ought to cry. We don't do that. You know what I'm saying? It, it's like sometimes, sorry, that was a mosquito, actually. <laughs> sometimes we look at, we are all such different people. Well, I'm just trying to encourage our hearts that especially when it comes to the matter of eternal security and salvation, let's not just jump to the fact of what emotion is going on and whether or not there was a rainbow in the sky when you prayed or whether or not it was raining outside and a butterfly came and fell down. That doesn't matter. The matter is faith. It, you, you, did I cry? Uh, uh, did, I, did this person cry? And, and this person, when they got saved, they ran around the building and, and this person like clicked their heels or well, stop and stop. Fine. Maybe you were emotional. Last week, I had the prison to lead the young man to the Lord. As I sat there, man, he was streaming down tears. It was great, but it's not that. The matter is faith, faith, and faith. With well, a moment, we de-emphasize faith and get on emotion. What happens is we begin to connect that was salvation. He, he says, John 3.36, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. Now, will it affect our emotion? Of course. Make a decision where you take your faith and place in you. Of course. But what I, but I want you to understand is salvation, as we look here by faith, does not confuse it at all with works. And as you then not confuse it then with works, understand that when the doubt comes, your assurance does not come from a shaky memory of something that happened at seven years old. My faith, it comes from the Word of God. So the days that then I say, I am not sure about this because my emotion now has changed of what's happened in my life circumstances, I go back to the book. John 3.36 says, He that believeth on the Son had everlasting life. That's exactly what I did, and I believed in Jesus Christ to save me from my sin. You say, there's another day. Romans 5, 8, but God commands his love toward us, and that while we are sinners, Christ died for us. I believe that Christ died for me and my sinful condition, and I trusted him for salvation. My entire assurance and faith is built, has to be built on the word of God. And this stops being a priority. It makes sense. You'll doubt. It makes sense. We will be confused. God help us. This matter here of assurance, because God certainly has kept his end of the deal of eternal security. Now, so I started this message. I, I, I battled between going two different ways, whether assurance, and obviously I went that direction, and eternal security and what Christ has done. But can I encourage you as I opened up from the very beginning here was, It, if you're a Christian and it's nerve-wracking to be able to take a Bible and show someone how to be saved, can I ask you to kind of stop whatever devotions plan that maybe you'd be going through right now? In addition to that, could you just take the time and say, God, help me to study passages that talk about what you have done for me so that I can effectively, using the word of God, share what you have done in my life. Look, you might not get, man, you talk about the millennial reign and stuff, it gets fuzzy for me, I'll be honest. 
But I one thing I'll be good at. And that's sharing what Jesus Christ has done for you. We bow our heads because our eyes here this evening. Father in heaven, I thank you for this time. Oh, how I thank you, Lord, for what the word of God is everything. It provides assurance. It gives us that peace to know that we are your child, children. I pray, Lord, that from here, Lord, that Lord, we would Lord, be determined to be passionate, Lord, about being able to share what you have done for us in our life. I pray for those inside this room who may have never, ever taken Lord, had the opportunity or never done so of placed their faith in Christ. Lord, that they would consider Christ. Lord, they would look at what he has done and by faith from the word of God place their faith in Jesus Christ. Our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed. This, at any service that I've, I preach, is, there's a thing that is called an invitation. It's, y'all are very familiar with it if you've been in church, but let me explain very quickly what it is. If I have an invitation, that means like a birthday invitation. If I gave you a birthday invitation to my party, what that means is I want you to come to my party. It don't mean you have to come to my party, but it means I sure do want you to come. You know, I, God gave an invitation. He wants you to understand what his son has done for you, that you might place your faith in him and be saved from your sin. He's not going to make you. But sure enough, there's an invitation. I have had everybody bow their heads and close their eyes because sometimes we get so busy, so many distractions, so this just helps us all to focus. It's nothing weird. It's just so we can focus. With our eyes closed and heads bowed, maybe you're here today and say, Adrian, I'm not sure I'm on my way to heaven. I'm not sure that I've been saved from my sin. I sure would like to know. I'm going to ask you to do the same thing that I did when I was seven years old. Somebody looked at me in, in a junior church setting and said, if you don't know, I'll be happy to meet you in the back. And just talk to you and show you some verses about what it means to be saved. I understand that we're in a building full of people, but I am not going to negate what the Holy Spirit has done in your heart if you're not sure. I know that there's Pastor Brown in the back, there's people in the back, that if you go back toward the back, be happy to take a Bible and show you how you can know for sure you're on your way to heaven. With that invitation I've given, I'm also going to give this invitation as well to those who are saved. Can I implore us? Out of this vacation Bible school, oh, I hope you have memories. I hope we have the astronauts and all the teams and it's fun. But I hope that you take away that you grab your Bible and hold it tight and say, God, help me to be able to be well-versed in what it means to share what you have done for me. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, I thank you for the sign, thank you for the opportunity to serve you. Well, I pray, Lord, that you just help, Lord, this make sense. Lord, take, Lord, feeble words and take your word and just do what only you can and, and convict our hearts and move us in a direction to where we come closer to thee. Well, I do pray, Lord, for those who do doubt their salvation. Lord, they're very sensitive and Lord, there's many think, different thinkers inside this room. I, I do pray for it to be an encouragement, Lord, that we wouldn't be distracted by the, the temperature and all the other stuff that surrounds. But, Lord, Lord, focus on what matters, and that's our faith being placed in Christ. I do pray for those who might never have done so. Lord, they're still considering. They're still thinking. They're seekers after thee. But I pray, Lord, that you just help them, Lord, as well, to come to an understanding knowledge of what it means to be saved from their sin and accept Jesus Christ to save them from their sin. Thank you, Lord, for the guests that are here. Thank you, Lord, for the young people who have spoken downstairs. So I pray that you just use your word to do only it can inside of our hearts. We do thank you so much, Lord, for everything you've done and everything you will do. In Christ's name, we pray it all. Amen and amen. Hey, thank you so much for your kind attention. I believe we're ending, yes, right on time. And so if you want, if you, you're you welcome to go downstairs. The refreshments and things are downstairs. And then we will end the night. That and Brother Dave's going to be doing some tricks. And we got some prizes and awards to be handing out for verses and visitors and all that good stuff here right before you take off here this evening. So you are, go ahead. You can be dismissed.
the last night here, and it just so happens that I brought some illusions tonight. You guys want to see some tricks? <laughs> wow. Wow, that was, that was convincing. All right. Well, let's see here. I think we're going to go ahead and uh, try a couple of uh, couple experiments here. So um, I have this, uh, this little cylinder right here and a tube right here. It's hard to see, but uh, if I drop it in, hit the watch quick. If I drop it in, catch it like that, right? Drop it in, catch it like that, all right? Try one more time. Now, sometimes we can try this slow motion. You guys think we should try this slow motion? Yeah. Okay, so, so for slow motion, I don't, I don't have the chariots of fire music ready to go, but that's okay. So here we go. Here we go. I'll try the same thing. Slow motion. Ready? Wow. Let's see it again. Let's see it again. All right. Okay, here we go. Ready? Oh. Yeah, there we go. All right, well, um, I've just recently been trying. Uh, anybody know what a Rubik's Cube is? You guys have a Rubik's Cube? All right, so I've recently been trying a little experiment with the Rubik's Cube. And really, I'm, uh, I'm actually pretty terrible at it right here. Um, but, uh, well, we'll give it a shot anyway. So if I mess up, you just have to make fun of me, all right? So I need someone here tonight just to mix this up. Let me start with, uh, in fact, I, I, how about someone just comes up here and joins me here tonight? Uh, you, sir, right here. What's your name? Samuel. Please give Samuel a hand as he comes up here to the front. All right. Here's what I'm going to do. Sam, you can stand right here. First of all, let me give it out to this side. I want you guys to mix this up a few times. Just mix it a few times. And uh, just uh, very good. Just twist however you want. Mix it all up so it's not uh, it's, it's, uh, as random as it can be. All right. Yeah, pass it to somebody else. Have, have, a, have another person do it too. All right. Just to get this all jumbled up. All right. Look good. Now, Sam, would you mind? I'm not gonna, would you go ahead and grab it from there? Would you guys give it to Sam here? And Sam, I'd like you to do the same thing. Mix it up a few more times right here. And, uh, and if, it, if I can't fix it, then I, I wouldn't be too shocked about that. And we'll try it right there. All right. Are you happy with it? Okay. Very good. So, so what we have here is the Rubik's Cube completely mixed up. And it really is mixed up, right? You, you can yeah. tell that it is mixed up. All right. So what I want you to do is I want you to go ahead and hold on to the bag right there. All right. See that my hands are empty. And uh, we're going to see if we can try to solve. In fact, I just got an app the other day to help me with this. They have an app for everything pretty much. Right. So, but here we go. Did you feel anything happen? Yeah. You did? What did, you, what did you feel? A little movement. A little movement. That's exciting. All right. Would you go ahead, open up the bag, pull out the Rubik's Cube, and let's see if anything has happened right there. Oh. Very good job. Oh, I was close. I missed it by two turns. All right. That's all it was right there. Very good job. That's kind of weird, isn't it? All right. Give him a hand. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That is really weird. All right. Well, let's see here. How about we try another... Another little experiment here tonight, and uh, I am, uh, I have some Rook cards. Anybody ever played the game Rook? It's a, it's a little game. Some of you, okay, cool. It's, it's a little game here. Basically, for Rook cards, you have um, four colors. Did I tell you this? Yeah. I already told you. So you have black and red, green and yellow, and numbers one through 14, right? So we're going to go ahead and try here. I need um, a couple of people right here. Let me see. Oh, man. This is the last night. Jasmine, you want to help me out? All right, very good, Jasmine. You can stand up over here, and then I'll get somebody from this side in just one second. All right, so, Jasmine, I'm going to go through like this. Whenever you want, you just tell me when to stop. Stop. Right there. Okay, all right, good. So would you go ahead, take that card. You can go ahead and take it. And uh, what is the card? You can go ahead and tell us. It's all right. It is a 11 and the color is yellow. All right, so we're going to go ahead, and uh, we're going to put a... Letter, yeah, this will be fine. All right, I'm just going to write a J for Jasmine. All right, got that? Okay, good. So hold on to that card for one second. And you, you still have the card, right? That's good. And if you could hop, have you seat on the front row for just one second, we're going to come over to this side, and I need one of these guys. Let's see. Would you go ahead and choose any card that you want? I'll let you select any card that you like from there. Okay, you got it? 
Are you happy? With, did you memorize it? Don't tell me what it is. Just memorize it. Yes? Okay, go ahead. Place it back right over here. That's fantastic. And Jasmine, we're going to go ahead. And, oh, I, I'm, I forgot. I'm terrible at shuffling. Can you, can you guys shuffle this stuff? I'm really bad at it right here. Oh, I told you I was bad at it. Okay. Are you laughing at me? Stop laughing at me. All right, good. Okay, good. So now, and then Jasmine, right over here, we'll place yours right there. We're going to shuffle these up over here. I'm better with the table. All right. So here we go. Mm -hmm. Now, the great thing about this is I am not even going to do this trick here tonight. I am going to give it to a very uh, impressive assistant that I, that I believe that I have. All right. So let me find him right here. Oh, yes. Ladies and gentlemen, we have an expert with us tonight. This right here is Henrietta. All right. Her name is Henrietta. That's her name. All right. And we're going to see here, not me, but we're going to see if Henrietta can find... We'll, we'll start. We'll see. We'll start with your card. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> Henrietta. Um, his, uh, let's see what he, let's see what she's got. What's your card? The green eleven. What was it? Yellow three. Okay, good. That's what she got too. Okay, that's good. All right. Very good. Very good. Now, <clears throat> this time. Henrietta is going to draw a card that I merely think of. That's correct. All right, now. <clears throat> so, yes, no, I, I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking out there. You see, you guys probably know this, but I can read minds. You see, you, you are thinking, yeah, sure, a wooden duck can find a card, but can she find it blindfolded? That's what you were thinking, wasn't it? Yes, I knew it. I knew it right here. So I brought a blindfold here tonight. And this time, we're going to find Jasmine's card right here with the duck blindfolded. All right. Very good. Yes. Got, you always got to take it up a notch. I learned that from Brother Adrian. All right. Take it up a notch. It's, it's got to it's gotta get crazier and crazier. All right. Here we go. Ready? And wait. Yours was the yellow 11 with it. Nope. All right. Here we go. Let's try this again. All right, it's hard blindfolded, okay? All right, so. You know what, I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I have a nervous feeling here. In fact, I, I kind of feel, this is not it, is it? No, that's, that's the three yellow. All right, uh, in fact, w w would you go ahead and see, uh, go ahead and find your card in there. I, th I think I've lost it. Fi find that, uh, that yellow 11, the one that has the J on it, just find it and give it to me. It's blindfold, all right, guys? What do you, what, what do you expect, all right? So did you find, just, just hand it to me as soon as you, as soon as you get, get it? Jasmine, do you have it? Do you, do you guys have it? Don't tell me it disappeared. Because that would, is it in there? It has a J on it. It's pretty, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. You, got, you, you guys can go ahead, pile those cards up, give it to this man right here. Now, Jasmine, you can set the cards down. Jasmine, I don't know if you noticed, but since you've come up here, I've stayed in this area of the stage. I have not even gone over to that curtain over there. Jasmine, would you please walk over to that? You see that white piece of paper there? It has three question marks. Now, would you go over there? There's a, a clip there, a little clothespin. I've not even gone near it. Would you go ahead and unclip that clothespin and retrieve the items behind it? There's a couple things right there. Very good. And can you go ahead and take a look at that card and show everybody? Is that it? It is the 11 with the J on it for Jasmine. Give Jasmine a hand. Fantastic job. Wow, that's weird. That is so weird. All right. Can I go ahead and get those back, guys? Thank you so much. That's good. That's good. Well, one last little uh, little thing here tonight with the, uh, uh, let me see right here. Get all this. All right. So I have, uh, I, uh, oh, yes, here it is right here. I need a prediction. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write this little prediction in just one second. I have my pad for the prediction. And I have, um, I need some more help here. Let's see. Um, how about how about we try this one right here? Um, I need someone a little. Actually, how about you ladies right here? You guys do a good job. Really good. I just need you to mix mix those up right there. And let's see. Yeah, would, would you mix these up right here? Just mix them up. And let's see. Would you mix these up over here? Just mix them up. Make sure that any particular. I'm going to do my prediction while y'all do that. All right. So let me see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, good. I'm going to put this right over here, my prediction on the stand so that y'all can see it right there. And how are we doing over here? All right, we get these mixed up. Fantastic. I, I forgot to ask you your name. What, what's your name? Grace. Grace. Okay, Grace, I'm sorry about that. Great, very good. So, so these are all mixed up. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. All right, so now uh, who else has them over here? Just place them, place them right on top. And who else has, oh, I skipped some. All right, that's okay. I'll just place them right on top. Okay, check this out right here. I'm not even going to shuffle these because you people don't trust me. You guys shuffle them. I'm going to lay these right here on the table like that. Good. And I also need here, I need someone who has an iPhone. Someone who has an iPhone that would like to assist me here tonight. Someone who has an iPhone. Um, it's not embarrassing, I promise. All right. I don't see any hands yet. All right. Very good. Would you help me out? All right. Do you know how to use one of these things? Is it unlocked? Can you go ahead and unlock it? It's unlocked. Okay. Okay. Very good. All right. So here we go. Excellent. Yeah. You, someone who knows how to type. All you have to do is be able to type things in. All right. Let's let's do. Let's do. Man, oh, you start right there. All right. Come on up. Very good. We can try this right here. Where? Man, I. My wife has one of these things. Okay. All right. So I'm, I'm really more of a droid guy. Okay, great. So, and your name is, wait, wait, it's not Jeff. Is it Jeff? Is it, have I met you? Yeah. Is it, what does it start with? J. It's not Jeff? It's, it's near Jeff. Jeffrey? Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> Sneaky, I like it. All right. It's like, man, okay. Can't win, win or lose it. All right, so now here's what we're going to do. Here's what we're going to do. We're gonna have we're gonna have a little a little so you have the calculator. Um, I'd like you to go ahead and uh, in your mind or go ahead and tell us out loud. Pick a number between one and ten. What's the number? You can tell me. Yeah. Four. four. Type in four. All right. And then hit times. And then point to anyone out there. Point to anyone out there. All right. All right. Did 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 you, did, did you type in forty? Oh, okay, okay, good. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah, I'll, I'll, let, I'll let you do it. So just type four, just hit four, hit times. Good. Now point to someone out there. All right. Who, who, just, just, okay, so I was born April 17th. So 17, what day of the month were you born? Day of the month. Give me a number. 16, type in one, six, hit times. Good job. Now point to somebody else. Point to somebody else. How about an adult? Point to an adult. All right. Any adult. They're just going to give me a number. That's all they're going to do. All right. Do you, do you know a name? Are you just pointing at somebody? What are they wearing? What are they wearing? Who is it? Brother Adrian. All right, Brother Adrian. Would you give us the first three numbers of your Social Security number? Just the first three. Or, or make up three numbers. It's up to you. All right. So. How about my area code? That sounds good. So type two, and then five, then two, then hit times. Brother Adrian, we're going to, let's see, uh, okay, then, I'll, then I'll, I'll give you another chance. I want you to type in any four numbers. All right, go ahead and type those in. Now hit divided by, and uh, there, I believe there's 57 cards in a Rook deck, so type in 5, 7. Now hit equals, and did you get a number less than 57? The answer right there, that's less than 57. Okay, go ahead and tell us what is the number? 36. All right, this is fair, right? So you chose the number between 1 and 10. You pointed him. He gave us a number. Brother Adrian gave us a number. You gave us another number, right? Fair? Good. Now, would you go ahead? Let's return, let's return this right here. And what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to count. You can pick up the deck. And like, yeah, go ahead, pick up the deck, because they don't trust me if I touch it, all right? So go ahead and count into my hands from the top, 36 cards in. Make sure it's accurate. Let's count for them. Ready, go. What? Six. Fourteen. Wait, wait. Seventeen. Okay. Nineteen. Okay. All right. Hold. Okay, that's way more than 36 cards right there. All right, so here's what we're going to do. 
Here's what we're going to do, because, because this is important right here. A couple of times, I don't know if you noticed, you grabbed more than one card. Did you notice that? All right, so go ahead and uh, let's see here. Um, I hate to do this, but we have, to, we have to count it again. All right, so, all right. Um, in fact, let me see here. I think, if I remember right, I think that this was a 36 card right here. Okay, so here, here's what we're going to verify. This was the card that was next, right? Um, count that out. Just count it. This, that's, that's 35 cards. I, you guys, literally, he was saying a different number than you guys. And then you added a bunch of extra. <laughs> Seriously, I'm not, I, this is, you, you get nervous when you're in front of people. All right, I know how that goes. All right. I really didn't switch anything up. This is the 36 card. You should have picked some bigger numbers out there, people. It's your fault. No, I'm just kidding. So is this the 36 card then, right? You're, you're, I'm asking you, right? It really is, all right? He's telling the truth. So go ahead and turn it over and tell us what it is. Yeah, because that was, that was 35, and this was the very next card. So it is, it is the green four. Now that's, that is really weird. All right, very good. Give Jeffrey a hand. Thank you so much, Jeffrey. You can have a seat. Here's what's weird. Here's what's really weird. I wrote a prediction down way before you guys even gave the number. And this is what's so strange. What was the number that you came up with at the end? It was 36. This is, this, you guys aren't going to believe this. See this right here? Look at this. Look at this. There is a three. And there's a six. Isn't that crazy? That's just, that's like mind blowing right there. But actually, if you look a little closer, 16 plus 1 plus 12 plus 7 is 36. 11 plus 8 plus 10 plus 2, that's actually 36. 5 plus 10 is 15 plus 3 is 18 plus 18 is 36. 4 plus 17, plus, that's 36. In fact, this way, 16, 11, 5, that's 36. 1, 8, 10, that's 36 right here. This right here, 12, this is 36. This is 36. Also, if you look at this box right here, this is 16, 1, 8, that's 36. This box right here is also 36. This box is 36. This, this one is also 36. This, the, I'm not even kidding. These are all 36. And just in case you weren't sure, I even wrote down the 36 card was going to be the green four. And if you're not convinced with that, I also have here a, uh, a rod right here that shows that I have four, one, two, three, four green handkerchiefs because the number was 36 and the color and car were green number four. How's that? All right. It really was. It really was. And uh, I promise that really was the 36 card. I didn't switch anything out at all. All right. Well, let's see here tonight. Just before we do my last one of the week, I do have one, one more trick where I need, I need a... Uh, I need a professional here tonight, Some, someone who wants to be a, possibly wants to be a future illusionist here tonight, and I just want to show you that this is going to be uh, quite helpful here tonight. Let me see. Let me see. All right. How about where? <coughs> I spoke to someone's parents earlier. All right. And, oh, uh, Jess, Jeshurin. Is that you? There he is right there. Give him a hand as he comes up here to the front. All right, yes. Now, he doesn't know exactly what's going to happen, but I did talk to his mom and dad about this just to get the okay. Uh, but uh, I don't know if you guys knew this, but this man right here has incredible potential, incredible talent. You knew that, though. You knew that. But uh, in fact, uh, uh, here's what I'd like you to do. First of all, before we do this, I need you to stretch out a little bit. So let, let's, let's uh, put your left arm out like this, the right arm out like this. All right, bring your right one in. Go back out with it. Oh, that was your love. Then bring this one in. Give me a head nod. Oh, yeah, there it is. All right, so, uh, all right, so here we go. Now, I want you to take your right hand and go like this. Left arm go like this. That's all you got to do right there. In fact, um, oh, can you also actually step, step on this chair right here and do that? All right, fantastic. That will be, yeah, that should be good. That should be good because you, sir, right here, I got something just for you. You are going to wow these good people here tonight. Here is the man right here. There he is right there. Just keep doing what you're doing. You're doing a great job right there. That's good. Now, <clears throat> it's taken a lot of time and concentration to get to the level that this man's at. So, so you can understand that his heart is beating very, very fast. It's beating very, very, it's almost bouncing out of his chest. It's beating so, 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 so fast. Can you see it? Yes. The, that's good. Okay, great. So now, <clears throat> repeat after me. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. Are you ready tonight? Are you ready tonight? For my magic tricks. For my magic tricks. 
And prestidigitation. And prestidigitation? Show off. That was good. All right. Are you guys ready? All right. has for you tonight. We're starting the music, and here we go. Fantastic job. Thank you so much. Well done, sir. You did a great job. I, I tell you, one, one of these days, I want to be like you right there. Very good. One last round of applause for Mr. Jesh. All right. Very good job, sir. All right. Yes. Excellent. Well, we got time for one last one tonight. And one last time, my wife, Miss Joy, is going to come on up here. And uh, are you guys ready? Here we go. I almost forgot, I need someone to come up here and examine the, the items right up here, just to make sure that they are legit. They need to make sure they're legit, let's see. Uh, Mr. Roy, would you select someone right to come on up here? There we go. All right, come on up, come on up.
check out each one of those things. Make sure each one of those are solid. There should be 10 of them right there. All right. Take them out. Make sure they're solid, please. All right. People don't trust me with this stuff right here, so just making sure it's all legit. Excellent. That's good. I think one rolled back here. All right. Good, good, good. They don't collapse down. They don't, they don't break at all. They are completely solid for us tonight. And last one right there. Look good. Would you take a peek inside here just to make sure everything looks normal in here? There's no, no nothing weird right there. Okay, look good. Yep. Okay, and if you come over here, check these out too. Make sure there's no mirrors in there. Make sure they don't fold down. Make sure they don't collapse at all. You can pick it up if you want to. Check that one out also. Same thing. Make sure it is completely solid. It is legit. Look good? All right. Now are you guys ready? Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. You can have a seat. Here we go. Well, most amazing woman I ever met right there, that's for sure. Well, I hope you guys have had a good week. Brother Adrian, I think it's time to see what the score is. All right, let's give a hand one more time for Mr. Dave this week. All right, well, we do have some prize. I do think I'm lacking volume here on this one. Let me switch here. Switch to the two here. Huh? We should be good? Okay, perfect, perfect. All right, well, I'm sure you're ready to see who won some awards and prizes today. You can look at the scoreboard. And it's a little bit incomplete, but we shall fill it in in just one moment. But what we're going to do now real quick is we're going to hand out some cold, hard cash. And we're going to be handing out some other prizes for those most visitors, most verses, etc., etc. Y'all look a little nervous. <laughs> we're going to start off with the cash prizes up here in the front we have these cash prizes up here and also uh pastor john i mean pastor josh has some uh, also some prizes for you the most visitors bringing a total of 12 people wow. throughout this family vacation bible school 
Drum roll, please. The fifty dollars. Yep, just one of those. All right. Y'all started it. Y'all stopped. Y'all stopped it. Keep going. Keep going. I need a representative from this family to come on up here and receive the cash for your whole family. Drum roll, drum roll, drum roll. Somebody from the Abram family. Yeah. Somebody, I need a representative. I need a representative from the Abram family. I need a representative for Abram family. She'll happily take it right here, Brother Josh, right here. Oh, that's right. that cash. You might want to go see Mama. Woo. Well done. With a total of 88 verses, the cold heart cash of stack of cash. Yeah. Drum roll, please. I believe this is a returning champion coming on up here again. Uh, but with 88 versus said, I wonder where on earth is Rebecca Chelly. Yeah. Come on up here to the Woo. front. Uh, 88 versus said, uh, having a reigning leading here at Kendall Park, doing very well in the verse department. Now the family averages. We took all the averages that were there, put them in a pool, divided it. How many people were inside the family? A lot of families were working very hard, saying versus bringing guests. But with this average score of 39,350 per family, we will not be handing you the prize because after you hand the prize, you will ask Pastor Brown, you'll tell Pastor Brown which family activity. So the father will just talk to Pastor Brown, whether it's Sky Zone. Oh, we'll be giving a picture too. Sky Zone and uh, what's the other? Top Golf or a family dinner. So I need the father of this family, if they are here, to come up to the front. Drum roll, please. <laughs> I need a father or a leader of the Abram, Abraham family to come on up here in the front. Where's Abraham family? Where's Abraham family? Come on up front. Give him a hand. Give him a picture. <laughs> Fantastic job. Talk to pastor and you will have your family outing. Very, very good job. Well, we also have, can you hand me one of those uh, those gift cards? The gift card there for Cold Stone. Uh, that bag has all the Cold Stone gift cards inside of it. We will hand that to the team leader. Have a seat. Have Back up to the seats. Back up to the seats. We will hand it to the winning team. I have the final scores here. And so we will go ahead and start filling in the blank. Obviously, it is one million in something. Let me come in both teams for their work. We will start here with this number right here. We will put a seven right here for the astronauts. And we will put a four right here for the orbiters. So here we go. Here we go. Who do you think won? All right. For the bragging rights this year here at Vacation Bible School, this week of 2019 Vacation Bible School, this is going to be a two, giving a total of 1,274,300. And over here, if it's a three, it's over. If it's a two or below, it goes over here to the astronauts. The final number is... Astronauts! Astronauts! <laughs> they won the week! <laughs> oh, wow! Brother Josh, here is the stack of Cold Stone gift cards. Great competition through this entire week. Thank you so much, one and all, for your great participation. Hope you had a wonderful time. Any announcements that we need to make, Pastor Brown? Any? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you.
All right, a clean up, plea, and yes, sir, Pastor Josh. Hey, VBS is almost over, but do you know, if you're a visitor, that we still have church on Sunday here at Kendall Park Baptist Church. So maybe this week was your very first time in the church. We want to invite you to come back. All right, VBS might be over, but we have church again on Sunday morning, Sunday evening. We have programs for C-Club that start up. When is the date for that? September 13th, C-Club. So if you have children, they're eligible for that. Make sure you get registered. If you want more information, please talk to Miss Laura. Also, teenagers, do not forget the Summit Teen Rally. Yeah. All right, good. Thank you. Thank you. A couple people are excited. Summit Teen Rally, August 25th through the 30th. If you haven't heard about uh, me saying it, I've said a lot about it, but we're having all-you-can-eat pizza. We're having epic games. We're going to have water night. It's going to be an awesome, great time just for teenagers. So if you're a teenager, make sure you get an invitation before you leave tonight. If you know of teenagers, make sure you get some flyers to give to them. I just want to make those announcements. All right, Brother Burden. All right, let's, let's stand together, and we'll close tonight in a word of prayer. If you want to help us clean up, by the way, you're more than welcome to, so that I don't have to be here till midnight. Great. Awesome. Yeah, my wife amens that as well, so. All right, let's pray. Father, thank you so much for the wonderful week that you've given us. Uh, Lord, we've had a lot of fun. We've been awed by the illusions. Uh, Lord, we've had a great time singing. But I pray most of all, Lord, from this week that the preaching of God's word, uh, Lord, would resonate in our hearts, that we would think about what we've been taught here, what we've heard here. And Lord, I do pray that if there is someone in this room tonight that does not know that they're on their way to heaven, I pray they wouldn't leave this auditorium without coming to one of us, Brother Burden, Brother Corn, Pastor, or, or, or myself, and asking how they can know for sure that they can go to heaven, that we could take a Bible and show them. Father, I do pray that you give us safety as we head home and that you watch over us. Thank you for being such a good God to us. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And you are dismissed in one second. Astronauts and orbiters, before you go, this was a very monumental VBS for both teams, and you all made it very special. We'd like each team to stand near your respective signs so we can get one nice picture of each group and we can post it on our Facebook page. All right, so if you're an astronaut, go ahead and make your way all the way down there and as soon as we take the picture, you can leave. So off you, if you're an astronaut, go all the way down to the astronaut board. If you're an orbiter, just make your way down the aisle, go down to the orbiters, we'll take one quick picture and then you can be dismissed, all right? So just go down the aisle, all the way to the wall, all the way to the wall. We'll take one picture.